Welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. This week, we are reading Crisis on Infinite Earths, Issues 1 through 12, by Bethany Schultz Hurst. John's already intimidated by the title, I can see. He hasn't read this before. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Crisis on Infinite Earths, Issues 1 through 12, by Bethany Schultz Hurst. 1. I'm at a poetry convention and wish I were at Comic-Con. Everyone's wearing boring t-shirts. When I give the lady my name, she prints it wrong onto the name tag. I spell it and she gets it wrong again. Let's be honest, it's still my fault. 2. Japanese tsunami debris is starting to wash up on the Pacific shore. At first, they trace back the soccer balls, motorcycles, return them to their owners. That won't last. There are millions more tons. Good news for beachcombers, begins one news article. 3. In the 30s, William Moulton Marston invented the polygraph and also Wonder Woman. She had her own lie detector, a lasso of truth. She could squeeze the truth right out of anyone. Then things got confusing for superheroes. The universe accordioned out into a multiverse. Too many writers penned conflicting origin stories. Super strengths came and went. Sometimes Wonder Woman held a lasso of truth, and sometimes she was just holding an ordinary rope. Four. Grandma was doing the dishes when a cockatiel flew in the open window and landed on her shoulder. This was after the wildfire took a bunch of houses. Maybe the bird was a refugee, but it shat everywhere and nipped. She tried a while to find to whom it belonged, finally gave it away. When, then she found out it was worth $800. Five, yeah, so there are a lot of birds in poems these days. So what? When I get nervous, I like to think of their bones. So hollow, not even pity or regret is stashed inside. Their bones, some kind of invisible making machine. Six. Is that black lab loping down the street, the one someone called for all last night? Phaeton, Jacob, Angel, or Rachel, depending on how near or far the man dopplered to my window. 7. I can't decide which is more truthful, to say, I'm sorry, or that's too bad. 8. One family is living in a trailer next to their burned out house. It looks like they're having fun gathered around the campfire. The chimney still stands like something that doesn't know when to lie down. Each driveway on the street displays an address on a large cardboard swath since there's nowhere else to post the numbers. It's too soon for me to be driving by like this. 9. Crisis on Infinite Earths, 1985. Cleared up 50 years of DC comic inconsistency. Undid the messy idea of the multiverse. It took 12 issues to contain the disaster. Then surviving superheroes like Wonder Woman relaunched with a better idea of who they were. The dead stayed dead. Now the universe is divided neatly into pre- and post-crisis. 10. I confess stupid things I'm sorry for. Saying that mean thing about the nice teacher, farting in the swimming pool, and graduate school telling everyone how delicious blueberry-flavored coffee from 7-Eleven was, posing for photographs next to beach debris. How didn't I know everyone liked shade-grown, shade fair-trade organic? 11. I wish I could spin around so fast that when I stopped, I'd have a new name. 12. Here's a corner section of a house washed up on the shore, walls still nailed together. Some bottles intact are nesting inside. I wasn't expecting this. Ordinary things. To be able to smell someone else's cherry-flavored cough syrup. There's no rope strong enough to put this back together. To escape meltdown of Fukushima 1, starfish and algae have hitched rides. They're invasive. What if they're radioactive? Thank goodness for the seagulls coming to peck out everything's eyes. All right, John. I'm trying to leaf through my leaflets here. Wow. Do you want to respond first, or do you want me to go first? Whatever. Well, there's issues 1 through 12, so which yeah, issue? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Which issue would you like to start with? Um, I guess what I was thinking as, as you were reading it was that the, the experience of reading poetry, right, there are so many different ways to read poetry, and like you can just sit silently and read the poem, or you can yourself read the poem out loud, or you can listen to somebody else read the poem. And I, I, as you were reading it, and your comfort with reading it and my seeing it for the first time, I just felt so overwhelmed, mm -hmm. right? And I was trying to just kind of maybe highlight things or um, jot down notes, 
And uh, as I was doing that, then I would get lost and I would like, oh no, I've missed something right and I would try <laughs> to catch back up. So I really, this makes me think, and the fact that it's labeled crisis, mm -hmm. right? This is an overwhelming scattered amount of material about a lot of different things uh, like a crisis. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, and I guess this gets back to my question of like, what, what is the quote unquote right way to listen to and or read poetry? Mm -hmm. Because if you go to a poetry reading and somebody reads this out loud and you don't have the text, that's it's a lot be, yeah. of information, right? Like when they read the news, the news is at like a fourth grade level, simple sentences and you can digest the news pretty easily. But something like mm -hmm. this, to hear it out loud is, you know, you would have to hear it, I think, again and again, mm -hmm. unless the goal is to get you to experience a crisis on infinite Earths, right? right. As it's as it's happening or unfolding. Right, and that, that there's the value of that kind of quick emo emotional response of just chaos and I'm yeah, turning what's pages. what's on and everything's disjointed, right? Right, but then I'm like, well, okay, but then to really get it, don't you have to go back and read and reread, mm -hmm. and then does that take away some of the sense of crisis because now you're controlling it? Well, I think that's what we've been talking about is emotional response, right? right? I think that's part of the reason we're doing this series is we, right. we want to have that visceral first response. It's okay to read poetry on that level. It doesn't always have to be dry you know, analysis because that kills it in some cases. Um, but speaking of analysis... <laughs> yeah, right, but I mean... <laughs> Let's so talk what, about... But what, what is the goal? Is the goal of the poet to give you the chaotic experience I think so I think it's that and what what would be the other goal do you think or does she want a more measured slow reading where you really begin to take it I mean clearly she might want both yeah right mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're doing is trying to do both kind of um, I agree with you I think the first time through and that's how I felt the first yeah. time through when I read it it was interesting because you know, it started with Comic Con, and she's talking about T-shirts, and then by the, it, but then the title is Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it, um, and so I felt that same way. I was just all over the place, and it didn't feel like anything matched. What I did notice after reading it a second time, though, yeah. is I saw this as a study, almost almost in motifs, you know, because yeah. there are three big themes that I see running through this poem. The, and mm -hmm. if you read it as Crisis on Infinite Earths. There's the three things are the tsunami and the Fukushima, I think it's Fukushima, right? No, Fukushima 1 reactor, which happened over in Japan, and she's seeing the debris washing up on the shore. Obviously, she lives on the west coast somewhere. Then you have the comic book stuff about Wonder Woman, and then you have the wildfires that have burned down a bunch of houses near where she lives. I don't know if that's in her neighborhood mm -hmm. or in her area. And so then I thought about those three things. I was like, oh, mm. the crisis on infinite earths. There's a crisis happening right. in Japan. There's one happening here locally for her. And then in these comic books that she obviously loves, there was this, ser this series called right. Crisis on Infinite Earths where they reset the story so that the characters could move forward. Right. So then I was like, ah, oh, well, maybe that's what joins it all together. She's overwhelmed by these natural disasters Right. and this crisis in her own life, and then she goes back to this Wonder Woman idea, and she may, she is Wonder Woman. She wants to See, so clear I up got, her story and start over again. Yeah, one thing where I kind of felt I made some understanding was in Part 9, uh, when she was talking about the crisis on Infinite Earths comics in 1985, and then they reset, like you said, mm -hmm. but now the universe is decided, divided neatly into pre- and post-crisis. But that's in a comic book. So I think she's critiquing co the simplicity of comic books. And, oh, you just reset. It right? doesn't work that way. But then there's still 10, 11, 12 going on right and here. She go, yeah, and 10 and 11 are, are childhood memories, regrets. Right? Well, I don't know so, if 11 is. I wish I could spend well, it I guess so that's fast when intense. I stopped. I have a new name. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be a... I guess that's current. Thing, yeah. But it's interesting, I hadn't thought of it that way, where if she's critiquing the simplicity of comic books and then she goes back to maybe this time, these times that these things happen sound like around the time when she was reading the comic books, mm. right? Mm. Like my childish, Okay. I, I think back to how mature or immature I was when I was reading those comics and I thought it was all true mm. that mm -hmm. life was going to be like that, but it's not. 
maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, and I thought, so the it, first thing I thought of when I saw the title was my son is obsessed with The Flash oh, uh, yeah. TV show. Yeah. And I like it too. Mm -hmm. But they've it's got this whole multiverse thing going on, right? And I've always thought, and everybody seems okay with it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, there's infinite number of multiverses and there's ten versions of me or infinite number of me. And nobody in the show seems to think like, oh, what does it really mean? Yeah, that's kind of strange. That uh, there's a multiverse and there's 50, ver you know, infinite number of me's. And they never really deal with the existential, philosophical, maybe even religious issues that might be associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like in part nine here when it's just like, oh, okay, well, the crisis is over. <laughs> you know, like, we're done. Yeah, the end. No. Yeah. You just start your life over. Well, it's almost like magical realism, right? Where right. There, there's just something going on that's totally bizarre, and no one, everyone accepts it. No one seems to be right. freaked out by it. And maybe that's her response, is she's, she's everyone else is going on with their lives, like in part eight, where she sees the family sitting in a trailer having fun mm -hmm. around the campfire, and she's like, wow, everyone else seems to be dealing with this, and I'm totally yeah. freaked out by this stuff. You know, well, she would rather, one? yeah, she'd rather be at Comic Con, right? Mm -hmm. Even though she seems to, at the way I'm reading it, seems to think like, yeah, you know, maybe comics are a little bit simplistic. She'd still rather be there, right? Right, rather than uh, the poetry convention, yeah. <laughs> right? Because poetry gets messy and you can't reset. It seems like here there is no easy answer, right? Yeah. So I think actually now talking about it, mm -hmm. right? I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. Um, well, maybe that that's first what reading. Yeah, it blows you away, right? Yeah. Like, whoa, yeah. what is and, all this? And bringing up the grandma, it's just all of a sudden you're like, mm -hmm. oh. No, you know, we didn't get emotional. to that part. Yeah, but yeah, I think, and like you said, what was the author's purpose? Maybe that was the purpose: is read it, be confused, and talk through it. You know, I think yeah. that was the best way to handle this one was just yeah. talking through it. Because I think if I hadn't heard you read it first, I would have been very slow in reading it, and I would have tried to understand it as I went. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't have gotten that kind of overwhelming mm -hmm. right response. Emotional response. Yeah. yeah. So, very cool. Yeah. All Do right. you have a, a question? Good one. Or? Uh, well, my question is, when you're in a time of crisis, is there something that you turn to, whether it's binging on Netflix shows or... <laughs> <laughs> thinking about existential crises oh, yeah. or reading magical realism what is it that you turn to for comfort in a time of crisis and does it help can you just reset after getting that comfort all right thanks for watching please join the conversation in the comments on youtube or on twitter at trojan poetry dgn also check out our website at trojan poetry dgn.blogspot.com